Hello everybody, 10.5. Today's lesson, we are going to find the arc, uh, find the angle and the arc measures, and we're going to use circumscribed angles. All right, so let's see what we got here. Uh, first theorem we got here is 10.14, uh, tangent and intersected chord theorem. All right, so we have a tangent line, right? So this is the uh, tangent line here, and we have a chord that intersects that tangent line. Okay, and right, so there's the chord, they intersect there, okay, no big deal. And then it's saying that this angle that it intersects and makes, right, that angle one is going to equal half of the arc AB. Right, so that angle one is going to equal half that arc AB. Now this should seem pretty familiar from what we just did. So if I had one and two, all right, so similar to this, right? So if this is angle, I don't know, we'll call this angle seven, and here's my chord, right? The arc of that, all right? This is arc, I don't know, PQ. Then angle seven is equal to one half of arc PQ. So this is just a different look, but um, the same exact, same exact concept there, right? So nothing really new, just a different look, right? It's using the outside tangent line, uh, or tangent line, right? Or any outside connecting at one point, right? That's what makes the tangent. And then that tangent line, so that angle that it creates, is half of that arc. So angle two would be, so you could look at it either way. So angle two would be the arc of ACB uh, or BCA. So either one, right? So pretty much the same kind of theorem there, just using the tangent line instead. All right, so let's take a look. Um, so line M is tangent, great. So touches here at one point. Uh, find a measure of angle one. Here is angle one. So angle one should equal one half of arc AB. Uh, angle one is unknown, one half, and the arc of AB is given as uh, 130 degrees. So now we know angle one is equal to 65 degrees, all right? So nothing too bad there. And then the other one is find the measure of the right arc. Okay, so here's the tangent line. Uh, here's the arc. So again, um, we don't have a, an angle name there, but we'll call that angle um, angle two. Okay, we'll call this angle two here. Angle two is equal to one half of the arc of K, J, L. And we don't know, we know what angle two is. Angle two is 125 degrees equals one half of that arc there of arc KJL. So and then you can find KJL very easily, right? Just multiply by two, multiply both sides by two, and so 250 degrees is equal to the arc of KJL. Nice. All right, so hopefully simple enough. And we keep it moving over here. Uh, a couple problems to practice. So we got angle one. Angle one is going to equal one half of two ten, right? So angle one is equal to one o five degrees, right? So giving you the angle again here, looking for uh, arc RST. So RS, sorry, RST going this way, right? So the angle is half the arc. So the arc is going to be two times ninety-eight. Right, so that's one ninety-six there. All right, so the angle is half the arc. I'm giving the angle. The angle is half of the arc. Here's the arc one ninety-six. The angle is ninety-eight. Here's the arc of two ten. So the angle is one hundred five. And lastly, we got arc x uh, x y. All right, so we got arc x y here, and the angle is half the arc, so the arc must be 160 degrees. All right, so if this is 80, the angle is half the arc. 80 must be equal to half of 160, and it does. All right, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, on the circle, inside the circle, outside the circle. All right, so we got intersecting lines on the circle, in the circle, outside the circle. Pretty cool. Um, all right, so something happens when 
these kind of concepts, and we'll see what happens, all right? So angles uh, inside the circle, right? So we got uh, vertical angles here, and of course, right? one and two are not vertical, right? We have adjacent linear pair, we'll bring back some uh, vocab. And then it says, uh, if two chords intersect, intersect inside the circle, then the measures of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercept. Okay, so let's make sense of that, right? So the measure of angle one, so here's angle one, is equal to, right? So measure one is going to look at this arc and this arc. Okay, so it's going to use the, I want to think about the vertical line, so the vertical angles here, right? And the arcs belonging to those vertical angles. So it's saying angle one is equal to whatever this arc is and this arc. So the sum of these two arcs, half of it. All right, so angle one is equal to take DC, add it to AB, right? That total, divide by two, will equal, will equal angle, angle one. And then angle two is going to be the same thing, except it's going to use BC plus AT uh, plus AD divided by two, and that'll equal angle two. So it's half of those angle, half of those arcs. Uh, it's half of the sum of those arcs, right? And again, you could be using the vertical angles there uh, that you want to consider, right? So it's this angle and this angle, right? That's what I'm looking at. I'm only looking at these two, so I know which arcs to reference. All right, so you're adding here. All right, so now you're on the outside right outside similar except now you're subtracting those two pieces right so angle one we're using the larger arc that it creates minus the smaller arc right the, the degrees of the uh, larger arc minus the degrees of the smaller arc find that number find that difference divided by two and you have angle one right that's on the outside uh, angle two is the same concept and angle three is going to be the same concept Right, angle, the first example here has one tangent line and one secant. This one has two tangents, and this one has two secants, but the formula stays the same for all of them. Okay, pause if you have to. All right, so let's take a look at this one. So we've got angle X here. All right, so angle X is this angle here. All right, so I'm going to look at this angle and this angle. They're both angle X, right? They're, they're both angle X here, okay? So... Angle X is equal to uh, the arc of KL, right? This corresponding arc here, the arc of KL, which is 156 degrees, plus the arc of JM, which is 100 degrees, 100, sorry, 130 degrees. I'm going to add those two numbers and divide by 2. So, angle X is equal to 1 half times. 286, right? 286, and therefore equal to 143. Alright, and these are this angle's inside, right? And now we have an angle that's on the outside of the circle, right? And it's using a tangent line and a secant line, right? So using a tangent line, right? This is the tangent line. This is the secant line, okay? Um, doesn't make a difference. The angle that we're referencing is on the outside, so either of the examples that we just showed you uh, will work the same way, except this time, rather than taking the sum of the angles, we're going to take the difference. Um, some of the arcs, we're going to take the difference of the arcs, right? So I'm going to start with the larger arc, otherwise I'm going to get a negative number, and I don't want that. So I want this larger arc here, which is 178, minus the smaller arc here, which is 76. I'm going to take the difference of that, multiply by 1 half, and I'm going to find a angle x. So angle x is equal to 1 half times 178 minus 76 is 102, I believe, and that is equal to 51 degrees. All right, keep it moving. Find the value of the variable here. Cool, so we got an interior angle again. All right, so now we got a little difference here. So now we have the interior angle. We have one of the arcs. We have the interior angle, and we have this arc here. We have this angle, 
what's 102, and we're referencing this angle. All right, so first off, the angle that I need for this one must be, I'm going to write this one in green, must be this angle here. All right, if I'm looking for Y, so then I need that arc with that angle right there. Okay, so I don't need this 102, but keep in mind that this is a straight line still, and they are still supplementary, so this angle here is 78 degrees. Right, because 78102 is 180. So now that I, now that I know this angle here, so that 78 degrees is equal to one half its interior, right? The sum of which two arcs? The sum of 95 and y, or y and 95. Right, so again, 78 degrees, right? This interior angle here inside the circle, these intersecting lines is equal to one half the sum of the two corresponding arcs of the vertical angles. Okay, so 156 is equal to y plus 95, and then you're going to subtract 95 from both sides, and you get 61 is equal to y. And that's it. All right, next one, number five. We got the exterior angle here. So we're not going to be using the uh, sum of. We're going to be using the difference of two things here. So here's the angle. Right here's the first arc minus the second arc. Okay, and one half of those. So now I'm just going to fill in the blanks. So what do we know? Okay, so we know that the angle is 30. It's the outside angle. I'm going to use the larger angle, so be careful here, okay? So that A needs to come first, because I'm going with the larger angle first, then the smaller angle. Otherwise, I'm going to get a negative number. That's it. So the rest is just stop. So 60 equals A minus 44. A is equal to 16 degrees. I should throw some quadratics in here, and then it'll be fun. All right, all right, we won't do that just yet. Keep it easy, keep it easy. All right, so those are the first five examples. Um, I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So we, we got through a circumscribed angle, okay? So it's an angle whose sides are tangent, so we talked about those. And again, this angle is equal to the difference of the largest arc minus the smallest arc times one half, right? That's what that angle B is. See what else they come in here, and there's now they're saying, okay. So this is a different one. So circumscribed angle theorem. So this one has a little, another theorem to it. So the measure of the circumscribed angle is equal to 180 minus the measure of the central angle that intercepts. Oh, very nice. So we have two tangent points, right? This is the circum circumscribed angle, right? So we have two tangent lines. And we have a radius, right, of AC going to that tangent line, which means that that's a 90 degree angle, and that's a 90 degree angle from previous uh, theorems that we've mentioned. And now they're saying that the measure of the circumscribed angle, so the measure of ADB, so this angle, is going to equal 180 minus ACB. So another little proof there, or I'm sure there's a proof somewhere. Uh, oh, there it is. Proof example 38, uh, page 568. I'll challenge you guys to download. That would be fun. All right, so there's your last theorem. So you have a exterior angle, or the circumscribed angle, is equal to 180 minus the central angle, if given the central angle. Or if you can find the central angle. All right, so good luck with that one. Let me know how that goes. And let's see how it, let's see it used. Oh, wrong way. Get rid of that. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, just had a little page glitch there. All right, so we got the angle X here is equal to. All right, so we got the circumscribed angle. So angle X. Or angle X is equal to. 180 minus the central angle, which in this case is 35 degrees, and x is equal to 45 degrees here, 
All right, so no big deal. And then let's see what we got on this one. So this one's a little different, right? Uh, they changed the look of this. So here we have our circumscribed angle. All right, and then we have a an angle X here, and we don't have the central angle there. Right, so the central angle would have been nice if this was coming from here to there. That would have been nice for us because then we would have known this angle here. And then we could set 30 equals 180 minus whatever that angle G is. Um, but we do have some interesting piece here. And I'll put this here in green. So we have this piece here, right? So we have a theorem that said that this angle is equal to one half of the intersecting arc. So it's equal to one half of that arc. Um, but now we know, well, if this arc was 50, then this angle will be 25. So if this angle is x, then this arc is 2x from here to there, which also intersecting these two coordinates are also intersecting off the central angle so the central angle is now also 2x and now we can write that 30 is equal to 180 minus 2x which means that 2x is equal to 150 which means that x is equal to 75 degrees right, so that was a fun one hopefully you followed along okay so again i use the some of the rules I had, right, so the circumscribed angle here, um, we have angle X, right, this angle, right, the central angle, so again, uh, just to go back, uh, this is my, this is my center here, this angle is the central angle, right, this is equal to, this angle is equal to this, uh, so if this is 100, then this is 100, um, but then if I took another chord, off of that one, and then this is 100, then this is going to be 50. All right, this angle here will be half of that uh, measure of that arc there. Or I could use that vice versa. I know the angle, so that means the arc is the angle is x, then the arc is 250, and that's what I used here. The angle is x, so the arc is twice of that, so 2x. And now that's also what I'm using for my central angle, right? So I used this is definitely touching the end of the circle because it's a tangent line. This is also touching the end of the circle and tangent line. And the center to the tangent line, right? This is the radius either way. Off of there, so I'm creating a central angle here. And then I got 2x. So 30 is equal to 180 minus 2x. Do a little algebra here, move a couple things around, and you got x is equal to 75. Alright, so we got example four. Take a second and read this one to yourself. All right, so I had to pause on this one for a second and go get a calculator. We're definitely gonna do a little calculator in this one. If you took a second, so we should see that we have a tangent line here. All right, there's my tangent line, here's my radius, and therefore I'm creating a right angle there. Let's see if I can make that a little brighter. There we go, we got a right angle there. Um, with that, we'll be able to find uh, this angle here, we go back in yellow there. All right, so I could find this angle here. So we have a right angle, we have the hypotenuse, we have the adjacent, which means we have enough to find that angle there. So we're going to use uh, adjacent and hypotenuse. So hopefully we're thinking cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent of the hypotenuse. So we have the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent, which is going to be my radius of 4,000 and over my hypotenuse of 4150. And that's going to give us enough to be able to find the angle by using the arc cosine, right? So we get rid of that by doing the arc cosine of 4,000 over 4150. And plug that right into your calculator. You know that off the top of your head, I'll be really impressed. And that gives you about 15.45. Uh, and then that's going to give you this angle here, uh, right there. And then both of these angles together is going to give me about 30.9 degrees, which means the center angle is 30.9 degrees, which means the arc BD is also going to be 30.9 
9 degrees or about 31 degrees. Alright, so that's all the examples here. Um, there's a couple more that you could try. Monitor in progress, have fun, and then your practice problems are all in there as well. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed. Good luck. Let me know if you guys have any more questions. And we go from there.